In this lab, you learn to create and work with buckets and objects and applied the following cloud storage features. Customer supplied encryption keys, access control lists, lifecycle management, object versioning, directory synchronization, and cross-project resource sharing using IAM. Now that you're familiar with many of the advanced features of cloud storage, you might consider using them in a variety of applications that you might not have previously considered. A common, quick, and easy way to start using GCP is to use cloud storage as a backup service. You can stay for a lab walkthrough, but remember that GCP's user interface can change, so your environment might look slightly different. Welcome to the walkthrough of the cloud storage lab. At this point, I've already started the lab in Quick Labs, and I am logged into the GCP console using the username and password that was provided by Quick Labs for me to log into the GCP console. So the first task is preparation. I'm going to create a bucket. Going here. When I go to create a bucket, it specifically tells me that I should be using a globally unique ID. So I'm going to use my project ID, which is pretty unique. I'm going to call it my project dash and then my project ID. Hit, and it's telling us multi-regional. So storage class is multi-regional. And then it's telling me access control is set object level and bucket level permissions. And I'm going to hit create. So at this point, you can now go to back to the lab page and you can hit check my progress and you should get a check mark in five points that you've created the cloud storage bucket. Next step is downloading a file. So I'm going to start Cloud Shell so I can do the curl command. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set an environment variable to the bucket name of the bucket I just created just for ease of copy paste of commands. Export bucket name one equals and the bucket name. If I want to verify that that worked, I'm going to do an echo dollar sign and the variable name to make sure that it got set correctly, and there it is. So now I'm going to download a file which is just a publicly available Hadoop documentation HTML file. And if I do an ls, I can see there is my setup.html, and I am now going to copy it a couple times to make a setup2 and a setup3. If I do an ls, I should see three files. There they are. So the second task is ACLs. We're going to cop the, copy this file into the bucket and then configure the access control list for it. So the first one is a gsutil command where I am copying setup.html into my bucket. Once it's copied, I then want to get the default access list that has been assigned to setup.html, which is based on the bucket, because that's how we set it. Then I'm going to, right here, I piped it into acl.txt, and now I'm going to cat that. And we can see all of the permissions that have been assigned. So now I want to set the permissions to private. So I'm going to set it to private. And then in order to see it, I'm going to pipe it into acl2.txt and then cat that file. And you can say it's now set to private. I'm going to update the access list to make the file publicly readable by running the following command. And then I'm going to pipe it into ACL3 so that I can verify what that looks like. You can see it is readable by all users. This is another checkpoint in the lab where you can hit check my progress. And in this case, it's checking if you properly made that file publicly readable. So now I'm going to verify in my bucket using the console that my file is there and that it's publicly viewable. And you can tell that based on this little icon and the public link that says that it's accessible to the public. And so now in Cloud Shell, I'm going to remove the setup.html on my local Cloud Shell instance. There it is. Let me remove it from the search here. Now if I do an ls, I'll see setup2 and setup3, but not setup. You can see it got deleted. So Let's say I accidentally deleted that from my Cloud Shell instance, but now I want the copy that was in the bucket back on my local Cloud Shell. So I could just copy from the bucket to my local Cloud Shell. And if I do an LS again, I'll see all three setup files. There they are. 
The third task is to generate a customer supplied encryption key. To create the key, I'm going to run this command. And then it's going to give me some output. And then I can copy this. But first, I'm going to see if I have a Bodo file. I'm going to do an ls-al. And I do not see a Bodo file. So what I'm going to do is I am going to run gsutil config dash n. And then I'm going to do ls dash al. And I should now see a Bodo file. There it is. So I'm going to do a nano dot Bodo. And then I'm going to find the encryption key field. I'm going to exit back out because I did not copy the key that I created, which I need. That is right here. Let me copy that. And let me go back to nano. And let me find the line with encryption underscore key. Going to expand this because it's very hard to see. The decryption key here is encryption key. I'm going to uncomment this, and then I'm going to paste in my key here. And then I'm going to press Control O, write that file, and then Control X to exit Nano. So now that I've set that up, I am going to upload the remaining setup two and setup three into the bucket. Here's one. And there's the other. Now back in the console. Scroll down. I'm going to refresh the bucket. I can see both of these files. And it shows that they are encrypted by a customer supply key. So this is another opportunity to check my progress and make sure I got the points for doing that step. Now what I'm going to do is I am deleting my local files by running remove setup star. So it's going to delete setup, setup two, and setup three. Now I am going to copy the files down from the bucket again. Then if I want to cat the encrypted files to see whether they made them back, you can see there they are. And I successfully was able to bring them back even though they're encrypted. So now I'm going now I'm going to move the current custom, customer supplied encryption key um, to the decrypt key. So let's go to nano.photo. Now I'm gonna find I'm gonna comment out the line that I added earlier. I should have noted the line number so that I wouldn't have to find it again. And crypt key is in the gsutil section. Let's see. I think I'm close. Looking for that line. So I'm going to comment out encryption key line and uncomment decryption key one. Right there. And then I'm going to copy this into decryption key one. And I'm going to save, 
six. So a best practice is you would actually delete the old customer um, customer key from the encryption line, but in this case, we just copy pasted it, so it's not a big deal. So I'm gonna generate a new key. And then I'm gonna go back to the photo file. All right, so I am going to add a new encryption key line. Let me make sure that I copied new key I made and then do the same thing again And I just passed it, so I am adding a new encryption key equals. I'm going to paste in the new key. Then control O to save, control X to exit. And now I'm going to rewrite the key for file one and com comment out the old decrypt key. Here it is. Back into Bodo, and then I am going to comment out the decryption key one. Now, while the instructions have you using Nano, you definitely could use the Cloud Shell editor as well, and that might be a little more pleasant than using this tool, but I'll leave it to you. You would just access that by hitting this little pencil here. Let's find decryption key one real quick. Close. So we're commenting that out. And then we're going to save it. Exit. Now we are going to download setup two. And download setup three. What happened? No decryption key matches because we commented it out, which makes sense. So the last task in this lab is we are going to run the following command to view the current lifecycle policy. So we're going to do this. And it says it has no lifecycle configuration. So I'm going to create a JSON lifecycle policy file. And I'm going to paste the following rule in here. So it's saying if it's over 31 days, I'm going to delete it. Write it, exit. Then to set the policy, I'm going to run the command provided in the box. And to verify that the policy worked, I'm going to press that. And this is another opportunity for you to check your progress and get more points in the lab. At this point, we should, you should have about 20 out of 35 points. Six, the task six is enabling versioning, and you can do that by using the following command. It says it's suspended, which means it's not enabled. So if we want to enable version versioning, we're going to run this command. And then if we were to run the get command again, we would not see that it was suspended. We would say that it was enabled, and there it is. So check your progress again, you'll get more points. And the next step, we're going to create several versions of the sample file in the bucket. So I'm gonna do an ls here. I'm gonna open the setup HTML file. I'm gonna delete any five lines to change the, the size. So I'm gonna comment out 
this link. And then I'm going to delete all of these links. There's probably a faster way to do this than just holding down delete. But that's what I'm doing here. I'm going to delete it all the way to the banner. And so I have now effectively changed the size of the file. So I'm going to control O, enter, control X. I'm going to copy the file to the bucket. Now I'm going to go back to setup.html, delete another five lines. Delete some more links. And I'm just going to delete up to here. I'm going to save it. And then I am going to copy it again. So if I wanted to list all versions of the file, which each subsequent one I was deleting different lines and making the size smaller, I was creating a new version. You can see there are three versions, the original one, the one where I deleted the first five lines, and then the one where I deleted the next set of lines. So I am now going to store the version value in the environment variable. So I'm going to say export version name equals the oldest version is this one. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to set this variable here, make sure it got set correctly. And it is set correctly. Now I'm going to download the oldest version, call it recovered.txt. And I'm going to verify recovery with a couple of commands. And it's saying, let's see, ls setup.html. Looks like that piece didn't work. So let me, I think what I did was I set the version name to the wrong thing. It should have been here. So now I can do the gsutil again. And it, oh, still didn't match. So if you do this, it's because you didn't follow instructions like me. And you should have copied the entire URL for that object. Usually what happens with the lab is if you have an issue, it's usually not that the lab is broken. It's usually that you missed a step. So go back three steps and repeat, and that usually works. As you can see here, that just worked. ls.al setup.html. There's the file. If I want to see the recovered text, you can see that the size is different here. So task seven, we're going to synchronize a directory to a bucket. Let me just copy these in. And then I'm going to sync the first level directory on the VM with my bucket. And then I am going to verify that versioning was enabled. So now I can check in the browser. I'm going to refresh the bucket. And if we go back here, 
first level. You can see there's a second level. And we can see the same thing in the console as we do in the command line. So I can exit Cloud Shell. So now we're going to do some cross project sharing. This is the last little piece of this lab. So I'm going to open another tab. I'm also going to go to console.cloud.google.com. That's not it. And I am now signed in. I'm going to select the other project. This one I have 2.6. So I'm going to copy the project from the Quick Labs site from your lab guide, and I'm going to select that project. This is my other project. And then I am going to now create a bucket for this project. There shouldn't be one in here because it's a new project. I'm going to also call it my proj in this project ID. And create. And this will now be bucket name 2. So I'm going to upload a file, any file. Hmm. And I've uploaded a screenshot, and this will be my file name. So I'm actually going to rename it. I can't. It's fine. All right, so now I'm going to go to IAM, Service Accounts. I'm going to create a service account. I'm going to call it Cross project storage and click create. And then I'm going to give it the storage storage object viewer. Click continue. I'm going to create a key. I'm going to select JSON, click create, and it's going to download that file for me. Me it's there, hit close, and I can hit done. So I am now going to rename this. Credentials.json. Jason. Credentials. There it is. I'm going to switch back to the other project, check my progress, and I should get five more points. So now we're just five points away from finishing the lab. Now we are in project ID 1, and we are going to create a VM. Create. Calling it cross project. I'm going to make it in Europe. In D, and I'm making it a micro and create. So when the VM is ready, I'm going to SSH into it. Here it is. Click SSH. Move my window back here. I'm going to need to get the bucket name of the project I created here.
I'm going to verify that it worked. And then I'm going to export the file name of the file that I uploaded. Grab that. Put quotes around it because it has spaces in it. Verify that worked. There it is. I'm going to ls what's in that bucket. From a VM on this side, it tells me that I don't have access to do that. So now I'm going to verify that. So I am going to upload here. Upload file. I'm going to select the credentials.json JSON that I downloaded. Close. And I'm going to authorize it with that file. To verify access, I'm going to do this again. And now I can see my file in there. do it with the file as well. Let me try to copy these credentials. It says I don't have access to that project. So if I wanted to do that, I would go back to this project and modify the role in IAM, which would be my last step here. Going back to I am cross project storage hit pencil and I'm also going to give storage object admin save. Once I hit save, I can hit check my progress. And then you will have all of the points in the lab. And the last step is optional. You're just going to return to your SSH terminal and verify that everything is good to go. But that is the entire uh, walkthrough for this lab. Hope you enjoyed it.